Hi, I'm Paul Germain, and welcome to another session of Smart Boating. You know, we do the shows on a variety of topics, and uh, but they all center around boats and how to enjoy your boat better. And uh, boats typically are, especially these days, fairly large objects, and they move at pretty good speed sometimes around movable and immovable objects. And there's a set of rules that help you understand what to do in a variety of situations, and they're very, very important. And that's what we're going to focus on today. And joining me is uh, someone very well versed in the area. His name is Brian Pike, who's the harbor master of Manchester by the Sea. Welcome, Brian. Good morning, Paul. Thanks very much for having me on the show. It's Good. a great topic you've chosen for today. Thank you. Thank you. You know, before we get into it, can you share with our viewers a little bit about your boating background and the sort of things you've been involved in? Well, sure. Uh, currently, harbor master here in Manchester by the Sea. Previously, harbor master in Kittery, Maine. Uh, worked in the schooner fleet off the coast of Maine, mooring and launch service companies, uh, marinas boat yards, sail training. So lots of different maritime uh, work. Yeah. For how many years have you been involved in this whole scene? Uh, I've been a marine professional since uh, 1989. Wow. Okay. All right. So a lot of experience. And and you've probably seen uh, when people did things right and wrong in terms of rules of the road. Uh, in fact, I have. <laughs> right. right. So we've got just the experience we need. So why don't we get right into the show? Great. Okay. Well, by end, you know, this whole area of rules and navigation is a very broad one. Uh, but I wanted to po point out some of the more important basic elements today that I think would be helpful to people. And as we move into the subject, some people may be asking, well, why should I bother even learning about the rules of the road, the navigation? And there are a few reasons for that, right? Well, there are. Uh, uh, one, uh, we want to think about liability. Uh, as a captain, uh, you're responsible uh, for the safety of your vessel. Uh, mm -hmm. It's no different than driving a car down the road. There are rules that govern. Right. Your insurance company will be awfully pleased if you follow the rules of the road, should there be an accident. And though they might be pleased if you didn't follow them as well, because then that absolves them from their liability, right? Precisely. Depending right. on who's at fault, I would guess. <laughs> right. Okay. And, and then finally, really, for me, the most important part is uh, if you understand the rules of the road and follow them, uh, your risk of being in a collision, people being injured, property damage are greatly reduced. Right. Right. That's a good point. Okay. So those are three key reasons. Now, when you think about the rules, my understanding is this two primary bodies, which are very similar. There's the inland and the international. Mm -hmm. uh, what ones apply where? Well, uh, here near the shoreline, we're under inland rules. Uh, and most of us operate within the three mile limit uh, for inland rules. Mm -hmm. uh, international rules, as I understand it, uh, will become uh, the standard regulation sometime in the not too distant future. But okay. right now we have the two rules. So they're morphing them together. All right. Okay. All right. So around here at Cape Ann, within three miles, you're governed by the inland rules. Right. Okay. And then uh, my understanding is that there's uh, categories within the rules, A through E or something. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. And B, B is steering. That's the kind of the one we're going to focus on. And within that, you've really got three you got a couple different uh, permutations there. You've got in any visibility, limited visibility, and within sight, or something like that. Does that sound right? Precisely, yes. Okay, all right. Now, there's a lot of terms, you know, as with any rules, there's terms right. that are important. But it seems to me a couple of important ones we need to explain are, you know, kind of who has a right of way at any particular time, and there's specific terms for the two vessels in mind. Can you can you help orient us through those ter that terminology? Well, sure. Uh, First of all would be, well, we'll talk about the stand-on vessel, okay. uh, vessel who has uh, substantially the right-of-way, um, and we also have the give-way vessel, mm -hmm. which is obligated to give way okay. to the uh, vessel with the right-of-way, which is the stand-on vessel. All right, stand-on and give-way. Give-way, Those right. are the key terms. Yes. Okay, good. Well, by and you know, uh, there's a whole bunch of rules, whether they're England or international, they're really important to understand. But it seems to me there's a couple elements that kind of permutate through the whole rule structure. And one of them is the, uh, the need for a proper look at. That's one of the early rules, like three or four or something like that, right? Can you, can you expound on what that rule is and what the goal of it is? 
Well, safe lookout uh, is really the best way to avoid a collision. Mm -hmm. uh, and lookout means more than just looking out ahead of you and behind you. Very important point. Lookout means looking behind you every once in a while. Right, okay. Uh, this way. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So just be cognizant of everything that's going on around you. Yeah. And you can also ask other people on your vessels to be on lookout yeah. as well. So if you were steering, you were looking ahead, I might be the lookout for the stern, right? right? Precisely. Right. Yeah. And, and there are some times when that's a requirement. Yeah, right, right. Such right. as when water skiing. Right. So, Good point. Good point. Um, uh, so we got sight, but they also uh, got hearing. Exactly too, right. right. Uh, our, our senses, uh, hearing is just as important. Uh, and as a matter of fact, as, as we go along here, we'll find out that there are actually sound signals uh, yeah. that we use to let people know our intentions. So yeah. uh, hearing, if you're in the fog, listening for power boats, listening for fog horns, it's all just as important as looking when you can't see right. in the so fog. You got sight, you got hearing. Mm -hmm. How about like radar and radio communications? Absolutely. Is that part of this lookout scenario? Well, we're really fortunate in this day and age. We have uh, other tools besides our own to help us be safe on the water. Right. Radar to see through rain and fog. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. night. Evening, night. Mm -hmm. GPS, which can give us a, uh, an idea of where we physically are. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't forget VHF radio. Uh, as a means of reaching out to uh, help you figure out who's out there and what they're doing. Right. And so the goal of all this lookout is to determine if there's a possible collision situation and be prepared to avoid it, right? Absolutely. That's the end result Always of all avoiding. this looking out. Great word, avoid. <laughs> avoid. <laughs> yes. All right. How about uh, speed? Because that's another mm -hmm. one, one of the rules that comes early on in the books. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they, so if someone is talking to you about an accident that happened or could happen, that's going to be on their mind. It's going to come up early. What exactly are they looking for in terms of speed? What are they trying to figure out? Well, uh, speed has everything to do with state of visibility. Uh, if you are in limited visibility, then you don't want to be going as fast as your boat can go mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. You don't have the sight line. And you, if your engine's going wide open, you can't hear. Right. So uh, other things that you take into consideration, are you in a, a densely crowded uh, navigational area? Yep. Are you in a shipping channel? Are you in a mooring field? Right. Uh, all things that matter. Right. Uh, and, and then you think about weather conditions weather, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if the weather conditions are poor with steep seas, well, you'll, you'll need to uh, rethink how bit. fast <laughs> you're going to go through the waves. Right. Uh, Maneuverability of other vessels. That would be absolutely. one, right? Absolutely. You're around a big tanker or freighter exactly. or something. Exactly. If you're around a vessel that's uh, restricted in uh, maneuverability mm -hmm. going down a channel, you can't just go right in front of that vessel because right. they can't stop. Right, right. The way right. you can. Right. So right. Right. when you're thinking about stopping distance, you don't think about just your own, but think about the vessel that's approaching you as well. Right. And then, of course, nighttime. If yes. you're out at night, you need to uh, have all of the tools and things to let other folks know you're coming and to know what you're seeing yep. as it's coming towards yeah, yeah. you. And it all factors into speed. So Exactly. So as you're thinking about the rules, think about applying, looking out for collisions, think look out and speed probably first, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Now we're in a mooring field. Yeah. Um, Anytime you're in an area of restricted visibility or a period of restricted visibility mm -hmm. or restricted navigation uh, due to other vessels, you need to reduce your speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's what we're talking about when we apply those speed rules. Correct, yep. right, to a safe and appropriate speed for the conditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, as we come into a harbor, uh, either in a shipping channel or through a little narrow channel down uh, in through a mooring field, uh, take into consideration conditions, weather, nighttime, other vessels coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, all those things are important factors yeah. when you're underway. Well, Brian, as we move through the rule book, there's a couple other significant rules. Uh, I believe uh, rule seven, rule eight, they have to do with kind of assessing the risk of, the, of, of a collision and, and what, what to do about it, right? Absolutely. What, what's cooking there? Well, uh, risk of collision, if you see another vessel, uh, you should be taking uh, steps to prevent that. Uh, yeah. If they're within a half a mile of you, you should consider that a risk of collision exists. You observe uh, uh, 
their path, approach, if you will. The path yep. of the yep. vessel yep. as you approach. And if you deem the risk of collision exists, yes. you must take every step available to you to avoid that collision. Right, right, right. So that's kind of, you got to assess the risk yes. and then time to take action yes. is right at that point Before, where you see there's right. the possibility of a risk. Before the collision. collision. Right. right. <laughs> Before the collision. That's a, that's a good thing. Now, how about, uh, sometimes I hear this thing bandied about the golden rule. Mm. What, what is the golden rule? Is that a rule that's in the, in the rule book or is it more kind of common seamanship? Common good sense seamanship, uh, practice good seamanship. And that includes uh, a proper lookout, operating at a safe speed, uh, taking uh, adequate steps to avoid a collision. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the golden rule. Yeah, uh, it, right, right. it applies to all of us. Uh, we're all obligated to uh, practice safe seamanship while underway on a vessel. Yeah. Avoid a collision is the golden at, rule, right? At all costs, <laughs> yes. So it doesn't matter whether you give away or stand, stand on or whatever. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. golden rule, don't hit the other guy. Well, that's right. <laughs> and, and there's a practical reason, too. Your insurance company will uh, actually determine how much responsibility you had mm. by your actions. Okay. So obeying the golden rule can save you money. <laughs> it's in your best interest, <laughs> right. You know, when you look at the rules, uh, I think people understand, many people think there are some rules that fit in there someplace, but there's a ranking order mm. to the way uh, people have to give consideration to other mm. vessels. And, my understanding is that power boats are at the bottom of this ranking, right? <laughs> They're considered the most maneuverable. They're supposed to be able to get out of the way, right? right. Well, yeah. that, that's essentially true. Yeah. True. Uh, if, if you're in a shipping channel with vessels that are restricted in maneuverability, think tankers, cruise ships, yeah. car carriers, uh, they're in a channel and they probably have to stay there, right. especially, as, especially as they approach land. So uh, they have a priority. Yeah. Uh, a fishing vessel? Fishing vessel, yeah. Uh, has priority over uh, everyone except a, a vessel restricted in maneuverability. And we don't mean someone trolling off no, the back of the console, right? We're commercial talking about commercial fishing. fishing. Right. Yep. A lobsterman, a gill netter, yep. someone right. of that nature. All right. uh, sailboats have uh, are really sort of next. Yeah, they're ranked above the power boats. Above the power boats, unless they have their sails up and their motors running, mm -hmm. and then they're a power boat. Right. And right. then, of course, lastly are the lowly power boaters. Holy power boaters. Let me ask you about one other one though. Mm -hmm. Is there something uh, like an uncaptured, uncrewed right. vessel? Is that at the top? Uh, that's right. The very uh, top of the list is a vessel not under command. Not under command. Now that could be a situation where uh, the skipper's been injured or yeah. suffered a medical emergency yeah. and none of the other crew members are qualified to be master of the vessel. Right. Or it could be broken down. Yeah. So it's not under command. Right. Right. Uh, and therefore... They get the highest priority. They get the most... That's right. Everyone stays out of their way. Get out of their way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Brian, you know, there's three typical situations a boater might find themselves in that the rules of the road could be really helpful to. One is a meeting, uh, head-on. Another one would be crossing at different angles. The other one would be overtaking. What I thought we'd do is just kind of frame out the appropriate behavior in each of those categories, and then when we get a chance later, we'll demo it. So why don't we start with the meeting head-on, uh, you know, kind of bow to bow. What's the story there? What's the basic rule there? Well, the basic rule there is think just like you're in a car in the United States. Yeah. Uh, you want to pass that vessel with them on your port side. Yeah, on my left, if you will. On, on my left. Right. That's right, right. correct. So I'm here going this way, they're there going that way. That would be normal. Now, are there port any port. signals? If, if I'm in unfamiliar territory, are there any signals that should accompany that? Well, absolutely. Uh, the signal for a pass port to port is one short blast. Okay. So we'll demonstrate that now. Yep. So one short blast. Now, the person who you've just signaled yes. should signal you back with the same same signal. Same one sig short blast. One short blast. Right. If there's any doubt, they should sound sound the danger or doubt, which is five. Five of them. Right. Short blast. Right. Right. Correct. Right. Right. How about if they want to pass on the other side? What's the signal? Two short blasts. Two short blasts. That's right, which okay. is less common, but uh, depending on conditions may warrant. Okay, all right. So that's one scenario. Uh, how about uh, when you're coming at angles, like let's say one boat is moving from south to north, mm -hmm. straight up if you will, and other one's moving from west to east. Mm -hmm. um, 
What is the basic What's the basic story there? Well, uh, there are lights on your boat which which help establish those conditions at night. But mm -hmm. if if someone's approaching you, uh, uh, 22 and a half degrees abaft the starboard beam. In other words, if they're approaching your starboard side in a crossing situation, yes, they have the right of way. Right. They are the stand on vessel. Right. We are the give way vessel. And the way you, again, you, you look just at the center line of your boat. Yes. You're up your boat. See, that's the zero point. And 22.5, which is kind yeah. of an angle back here, all this is your danger zone. Correct. And you've got to give way, right? You've got to do whatever you need to do That's right. to avoid the other vessel, which could be what slowing down, could be changing direction, but but typically you want to pass behind that other vessel that's Correct. in your danger zone, right? Correct. And, and a really important thing to remember is you want that other vessel operator to know that you understand they have the right of way. So right. you make a substantial course change or maneuver such as slowing down so that it's clear to them and you can call on the radio as well yep. VHF is an important tool you that may be the very best way probably better to They're reach out signals and everyone's going to be that's VHF. correct right. that's correct now buying this one other scenario uh, meeting intersecting and then uh, overtaking right? correct yeah What's the rule there? Well, uh, the rule there is your, your vessel that's ahead is your stand-on vessel. Mm -hmm. They have the right of way, but they have an obligation also to hold their course and speed as you're overtaking them. Okay. Uh, as the, uh, so they're stand-on. Mm -hmm. uh, you, as the overtaking vessel, are the give way or burdened vessel. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, you would pass on their port side, yep. uh, your starboard, okay. the sound signal, it's exactly the same, mm -hmm. one short blast, mm -hmm. and uh, you're obliged to uh, overtake them uh, and, and give way to them uh, should they need to make a, make a maneuver. All right. And I understand that's a little nuanced that some people may not be familiar with it. If I'm in a slow-moving powerboat mm -hmm. and it's a faster-moving sailboat under sail, not, not when using its power, my understanding is that, that the rules apply if the sailboat's going faster than the slow-moving powerboat, they have to observe those overtaking rules just like they were another powerboat, right? That's exactly right. Uh, overtaking vessel is an overtaking vessel is an overtaking vessel. Right, right. You are burdened. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Brian, here's a classic uh, passing situation. That's Sounds right. like they're signaling appropriately. That's absolutely right. We have a port to port passing, uh, headway speed. We've had the sound signal. Mm -hmm. One short blast for passing port to port mm -hmm. and the response. That's picture perfect. Yeah, beautiful. Brian, here's a classic uh, meeting situation. That's right. We have two vessels, uh, one approaching uh, the starboard side of the other. Mm -hmm. uh, the larger vessel is the give way vessel. The smaller mm -hmm. one is stand on. Mm -hmm. The give way vessel has made the appropriate maneuver, uh, gone slowly and turn to go off the stern of the stand-on vessel. Classic right. example. Right. Well, Brian, here's a classic overtaking situation. Uh, that's right. Large vessel overtaking small. Large vessel sounds the uh, one short blast to uh -huh. overtake uh -huh. uh, on uh, the smaller vessel's starboard side. Uh -huh. Small vessel whistles in agreement. And we have our safe passing at a reasonable rate of speed. Perfect. Textbook. Perfect. Well, Brian, in terms of the rules of navigation, there's, there's some that uh, attach to very specific situations. And I'm thinking around here, we have a lot of rivers, like the Sanisquam River, the Merrimack River, and so on and so forth. Is there a rule that people should keep in mind that has to do with the way the current's running and visibility in those situations? Mm, absolutely. Um, uh, if you're uh, in an area of restricted uh, maneuverability, a narrow channel coming under a bridge, yeah. uh, uh, you have an obligation, if, if someone is coming with the current downstream, yeah. Yeah. they have the right of way. They do. Because uh, why? Because they well, can't maneuver they as well. They cannot right? maneuver as well. They can't back down. They can't turn around as quickly. Right. Whereas you can. You're going with the current, so you are considered to have more maneuverability. All right. So those downbound vessels have yeah. the right of way. Downbound vessels, yeah. Right. So, so keep to the right mm -hmm. and, and give those guys that are kind of being swept the current a That's lot of maneuvering right. room. That's well. right, because they're restricted in maneuverability. Right, right. Okay. How about we're in a situation here that we've got actually two scenarios here. We've got limited visibility because it could be difficult to see around this pier. And we've also got a situation where we could be backing up. Mm -hmm. So we've got both. What are the rules that govern limited visibility and leaving a berth? Well, 
absolutely right, Paul. If, if this were a low tide, we would be restricted in maneuverability, yeah. particularly yeah. if there were a lobster boat tied right. up here. Exactly, which so, it is. Right, so yeah. uh, uh, we want to sound a signal, one long blast. All right. Now let folks know, loud blast, what's going on, somebody's doing something. Yeah. Uh, and then you back out slowly, keeping a sharp lookout uh, for any other vessels Let's underway. Demo that. Sure. Demo that? Absolutely. All right. All right, so we're getting underway. Uh, we're going to give a, a blast. It'd be a five second blast. I'm not going to do, do it. A shorter one. Right. right. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. And then keeping a sharp lookout. Yeah. And this might be where I could help too. That's right. right. You can keep an eye open. Yeah. Uh, just steerage way mm -hmm. so that we can see down the channel. Yeah. And that there are no vessels coming. Yeah. And then it is safe to proceed and back out into the channel and get underway. Yeah, yeah, so that's important. Yes. Signal people before you leave uh, a berth. Or signal people if you're into limited visibility. Roger that, such as approaching a narrow Still bend okay. in a channel. Right. If you're approaching a narrow bend where you can't see around, uh, you should, right. your ideal uh, maneuver is to call on the radio. Right. Uh, give us security, 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 uh, harbor master vessel approaching sharp bend. Yeah. Uh, or using your, your horn. Right, right. One, one blast. One long blast. Yeah. Well, Brian, you know, apparently there's different rules for different levels of visibility. So I thought what we do is we talk a little bit about restricted visibility. What, what exactly, first, what exactly is that? And then what sort of signals do we have to give depending on the different types of boats? Well, restricted visibility, uh, as our example, leaving the berth, um, we were restricted in visibility. Uh, could be a weather condition. Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, something in your way. Yeah. So okay. uh, with restricted visibility, you want to give one short blast to uh, let folks know you're getting underway. Right. Okay. All and right. Uh, that could be any number of different things that would cause you, even going to a mooring field yep. uh, with, with lots of boats. That, okay. that could restrict your visibility. And you'd want to slow down and go at a safe speed. Right, so boats, actually boats in, in the mooring field, moored, yes. usually if they're outlined to that area, they don't have to be giving these signals in limited visibility. Correct. But like you say you enter the mooring field, hmm. or if you're anchored, Yes. You want to be giving a signal. There's rules about oh, the signals for right. that, right? Absolutely. Anchoring is uh, one of those special situations. Now, if you're in a special anchorage, you're not required right. to make sound signal. But if you are, uh, then you actually have to post some. If you are not in a special anchorage, you must sound a bell. Yeah. Okay. And you must post a lookout. Yeah. So it's a sound and signal, uh, a signal and a visual uh, lookout okay. when at anchor. So more vigilance there. Now, is there a difference between uh, the sounds the power boat has to make or a sailboat has to make when they're out there in the sea? This right. Uh, if you are on a, a sailboat mm -hmm. uh, underway, mm -hmm. uh, you want to sound one prolonged blast. Okay. And that lets people know that you're a sailboat you're a underway. Sailboat. Right. That's right. Right. If you're a power boat, it's one long and two short blasts, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that lets people know you're a power boat underway. Okay. All right. Now, how about small craft. I mean, there's a number of rules for sail and power, anchorage and non-anchorage. Um, is it, Do they apply to a certain size of vessel? Well, they do. Uh, and uh, I believe it's just over 39 feet long. Vessels approximately 39 feet in length uh, yeah. and longer must use those sound signals. Okay. Uh, under, no, they aren't required to make all those signals. Right, okay. Well, Brian, we've been talking about the rules of the road, navigation rules mm -hmm. here today. And some people may be curious, uh, if I have a kayak or if I have a paddleboard or a jet ski, do these apply to me, yes or no, and in what situations? Can you give a, just a quick overview of that? Well, absolutely. Uh, the rules do apply. Uh, uh, when you think of a jet ski, you're, you're a powered vessel, so right. there, there really are no distinctions between you and a center console or a big sport fisherman. Yeah. Uh, paddleboarders, uh, may uh, seem to have less rules applying to them, yes. but uh, when you think about a kayaker crossing a channel mm -hmm. uh, in front of a vessel of restricted maneuverability, that's just not the way it's done. Right, right. Uh, and the same rules rule. apply. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. Absolutely. And, and it's the same with paddle boarders. Paddle boarders, kayakers, any of the paddle sports, yep. remember those rules apply to you as well. Mm. Brian, under the umbrella of the rules, 
uh, they, they break out different categories. You really have like, uh, you have different levels like federal rules and state rules and mm -hmm. town and city rules. And under that last area would be things like no wake zones, right? Absolutely right. How does that uh, work? And wake zones are, are, are very important things. Uh, it's no different than a speed limit sign on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, creating a wake can cause personal injury or property damage, damage to the shoreline, damage to docks. So uh, state law here in Massachusetts, anytime you're within 150 feet of anything, mm -hmm. the land, mm -hmm. a dock, mm -hmm. a boat, a boat on a mooring, a person in the water, it's a no wake zone. Really? And no yeah. wake means no wake. Yeah. Look behind you. Yeah. You should be going at steerage headway only. Okay, all right. And usually there's some buoys that demark an area like that, Oftentimes right? Oftentimes there are, yeah. but even if there aren't, Okay. When you're within 150 feet, 150 feet. of anything, oh, okay. it's a no wake zone, yeah. sign or no sign. Yeah, that's not very far. That's not very far right. at all. Right, so be alert. That's right. Yeah. Just remember, the question I always ask is, mm -hmm. if you're on your boat and mm -hmm. somebody comes by and creates a wake and somebody on your boat gets hurt, what would you want to happen? Right. Extend that same courtesy to the other boaters around you. That's a good point. Good point. Well, Brian, there's a lot of rules to remember, whether you look at inland or an international, whatever. Um, What's a good way for someone to initially become familiar with the rules and then what's a good way for them to remember them? Well, there are lots of great courses you can take uh, through the U.S. Coast Guard, Environmental Police. Um, uh, if you don't want to take a course, then you can buy a copy of Chapman's, which is a great uh, book for mariners. Mm -hmm. It covers everything. And then you can also go out and buy a copy of the International Rules and Regulations right. at any marine supply store. Buy one of those books, to have it on board as a handy guide, it's not a big book, mm -hmm. and take some time to read it when it's a foggy day <laughs> and familiarize yourself with the rules and regulations. Right, right. Well, Brian, you know, this whole subject of navigation rules of the road is a, is a big one, but hopefully we've helped people today a little bit with some of the more basic, the terms and some of the actions to take in certain situations. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add to the show today before we close it out? Well, I really would like to touch again on uh, going out and getting some of those publications uh, mm -hmm. that we mentioned uh, and spending some time with them. Uh, you are obliged to know the rules of the road when you're on your boat. Right. It's the law. Right. And uh, in order to get home safely, you should want to familiarize yourself with those rules and regulations. So, right. so get the material, yes. study it, yes. keep Take a reminder a on board mm -hmm. if you can. Absolutely. Take right. a course. Take a course. Winter's yeah. along. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great time to take a course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Brian, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And thank you, Smart Boeing viewers, for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about the shows, come visit us at www.smartboatingus.com. Thanks.